but, but it's safe to say that it won't be all four original members, which is maybe what you hoped originally. Yeah. Um, right now, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of different scenarios that could happen. Um, but it, as it stands right now, I will be out. I will be out with, uh, with some of my mates, whether it's the originals, or whether it's Lonnie and myself, or whether it's me, Mick, and Lonnie, or whether it's Jimmy, Mick, and Lonnie, and Mark, or, or, or other people. I'm hoping that we can uh, try to find common ground. You know, negotiations sometimes take a little bit, a little bit of time. And, uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to negotiate something. Right, right, okay. And um, the other, the other uh, question I wanted to ask you was other projects you were telling me before we came on air that you've been offered a number of things and you played the other night with Tony McAlpine and also Bruce Kulik during the NAM Jam. Yes, oh my gosh, that was awesome. I had such a wonderful time. Uh, um, Bruce Kulik, of course, the Kiss, and Tony McAlpine, one of the greatest fusion guitar players around. Uh, to, to pit up and sing with those kind of cats and, and, and um, two of the guys from Booney Rock and, um, and I'm so sorry I forget their names, I'm such an idiot. Um, but they're, they're, they're these amazing musicians, man. Mm -hmm. Get up there and do like Jeff Beck's going down, which we did. Mm -hmm. So much fun. Mm -hmm. So much fun. And I did hear rumors of a musical. Do you care to talk about that or is that uh, to be kept uh, secret for now? I'm sorry? A musical? Is that true? Or? <laughs> possibly, yeah. I've, yeah. Been, um, I've been approached to uh, possibly talk about it, possibly, um, possibly doing something in theater. Mm. So I'm very open to it and I, I would love the idea and the opportunity to do something like that. I think it would be a wonderful, wonderful situation. And a lot of our listeners and viewers are in Australia. Is also some rumors about perhaps touring Australia? Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get to Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we speaking to some promoters at the end of last year, mm -hmm. trying to figure out the best time to come to the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go there now <laughs> because Australian Open is happening there. I'm a huge, huge tennis fan. I thought mm -hmm. that's my sport. I've been playing my whole life. But uh, we were trying to work it out so we could come sometime in this time of year, mm -hmm. but it didn't come into fruition. Uh, and we're still talking about it. We're trying to find, uh, not trying to find, we're trying to uh, figure out what would be the best time for us to go up. Right, right, okay. And um, the other thing, uh, I think it's time for another song. the best time to go down there. <laughs> Depends. I mean, Europeans drew the map of the world, you know, for all you know, we're Australia's yeah, at the top. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah so I think that's another story. <laughs> Welcome to episode 18 of uh, White Line Fever. And um, I'm sure you've enjoyed our interviews over the last couple of weeks with Mark Torian of, um, of Bullet Boys. For those of you who Just aren't watching... Just to give but... a bit of taste because we're right by the beach. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Although on the podcast you can't see anything. <laughs> But uh, there's been, he's flashing some goldfish in front of the camera, goldfish yeah, on the phone. crazy aquarium fish. So firstly, uh, serious stuff, Mark, we'll wrap up what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Your fans just want to know what's happening, and what is happening is that you do want to work with the other three fellas, um, but uh, there's been some road, there's been some humps, some roadblocks, so you'll be yes. touring with someone in, in the next few months. I'll definitely be playing with... Uh, with uh, some of the mate, some of my mates have been playing with in the past, mm. uh, and yeah, we're you know we're just trying to figure out a common ground here. And hopefully, we'll be able to find it. But if not, you know, I still continue on, and and there will be a new Bullet Boys CD out this year, and there will, there will be a new video. Mm. So I'm, I'm actually really really excited about the prospects of that. Mm. Uh, but there also um, is going to be a solo CD mm. and a new uh, a new group. That I'm going to be coming out with this show. Oh, cool. Now, I, now I, don't, I never want to be, from doing this 20 years ago, I never want to be one of those guys who writes a review and then sort of fronts up with a big smile when they meet the guy. I, when I reviewed the show, I thought the crowd were disappointing in their reaction. I thought they were subdued and they didn't really give you a lot of encouragement. Now, that was my... I, I thought, you know, you guys, you never hadn't played together in whatever it was and the crowd seemed a bit underwhelmed and, you know, where they could have given you a little bit of support. What did you think? Because the encore didn't happen, did it? There was a the, the the guy on the PA said, "Oh, they'll be back for another song," and then they didn't. You didn't come back. What happened you know, at the end of the show? Two hours. And yeah. I thought that was. I thought that was enough. Yeah, yeah. What did you think? How did you think? What did yeah. you think? Because I know Jimmy went to the edge of the stage and said, "Come on, guys." I know the LA crowd. They like to be cool, don't they? You know. Uh, I, to, to be honest with you, I think the crowd was very responsive for a Hollywood yeah. crowd. Yeah. Uh, we 
Hollywood crowds don't even, they never cheer. Mm. You know, it's not, uh, it's an amazing <laughs> response actually. And it's a very blessed, blessed response from the Hollywood crowd. It was amazing. Yeah. What was the experience like to get up on stage with the fellas for the first time in all that time? Like jumping back on a bike again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, it's a, so in that regard, it's a bit unfortunate what happened since, I suppose, but I'm sure you'll sort that out. Let's talk about tennis. Oh, yeah. oh yes, let's talk <laughs> about tennis. Yay. No, we're, we're, we're this out. Yeah. I told you before, Steve, mm. like, mm. off the record, mm. I put my life into God's hands, mm -hmm. and God makes those decisions for me, whatever God has in my future, mm. Lord, or the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to make all these decisions. I'm trying to let my higher power take over. Take over for it. And it uh, it's working for me. Okay, you're going to be a tennis coach. Tell us about that. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm working right now, and I'm um, working on finalizing, getting my um, how would you say, sanding off the rough edges of my game. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge and avid tennis fanatic mm -hmm. fan. Um, I've been playing all my life, and I'm getting ready to certify, get certified here in the United States mm -hmm. as, uh, as a teaching professor. Mm. And so, what will that will that involve? You working with professional tennis players, or what, what will that involve? I, I hope so. Um, I'm right now working with underprivileged children mm. uh, here in Los Angeles, going on my own and teaching tennis mm. uh, to some of the children that um, uh, don't don't have that opportunity mm -hmm. to buy rackets or tennis balls. And mm. uh, uh, I still feel that tennis is uh, as is, as golf is still mm. very much a, almost an elitist mm. type of sport. Mm. You have to have the right equipment. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, I just love the game so much. It's, I, I, I love it just as much as uh, as, as music. It's mm. been something that I that's walked with me and since I was um, since I was very young. Mm -hmm. uh, my father uh, was my coach. Uh, mm. Played number one on, on my high school team. I uh, had a scholarship to go to USC, which I'm end up doing. But uh, USC, yeah, baby. <laughs> um, but I'm really into trying to bring um, a different aspect of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a loss in the love of the game, mm. but I see a lot of kids in children, excuse me, uh, and young uh, young adults that are really trying to gravitate in the inner cities to this to mm. the sport. Mm. It is something that uh, that that they never have an experience for, mm -hmm. for you know. Also, there's um, I was just watching on a tennis channel actually mm. that. Uh, that they're trying to bring the game of tennis to um, our prison systems here mm -hmm. to try to get some of the inmates to play tennis. Uh, the, uh, the Bryan brothers just went up to uh, here to a prison, um, uh, a state prison here in California, and went up to play doubles mm. with, with some of the inmates, and it, it just it made me tear up. Mm -hmm. It just made me so moved to see that this game, tennis, has such an impact on people. people it, 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 it's almost like a saving grace for people, mm -hmm. and it has been for me. You know, I, I still hit balls all the time. And I'm hoping to get back into playing some satellite tournaments here, here in the States. Let's finish with this. Are there any other musicians you'd like to challenge to a tennis match? I am right now. Whether they want to listen to me or not, I'm. I'm challenging Lars Oldman from Metallica to a singles tennis match to eight game process. Either him. Or, um, or Gavin Rossdale. And I'll tell you right now, <laughs> I'll take both of those cats. <laughs> We're finished. Thanks so much for your time today, Mark. And uh, one more song. Absolutely. Um, let's do, uh, let's, let's, what's a good one to see? I'll tell you what, sometimes when can't just think of anything else to do, I have to tell my girlfriend, baby, you gotta make me hard as a rock. <laughs>